made him try this path. So long, I spent many years living like a ghost. So long, I let pain teach me on the road. I just grew accustomed to the high lights hanging on the shore. Today we're going to be reading from Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also, the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought another five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things, and I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. 
The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have, had not, have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have in abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Actually, it's afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Good to see you all. So exciting to be with you. Um, you've met Christina already. If you want to know more about Christina, at Chrissy T Music. I think there have been a couple of questions already. Her music's there. Exciting thing is new music coming out uh, next year. So we'll be back, uh, Christina and I, at some point next year. So please look out for notices and come and see some of her new music. And I'll be launching a new book. Um, and we just love being part of the Message family. And I've been, ever since I heard about this church plant uh, and what's happening here at Message Community Church, longing to come and see it. Uh, and so thankful to have this opportunity to be with you uh, this morning. And to, to also share with, back in Cape Town with the message team in Cape Town uh, and my own church in Cape Town, Jubilee Community Church, about what God's doing here. Because uh, it's incredible, isn't it? Right around the world, to, right this morning, God is doing miraculous things more than ever. And we need to be the people of the good news. We're sick of the bad news, aren't we? We need to be the people of the good news. There's good news to be shared. And I get the privilege of doing that in Cape Town, South Africa, where I launched the message South Africa 10 years ago. And now I'm in the process of expanding the message into other parts of Africa. If you, I'm not here to talk about that this morning, but if you want to know more about it, then come and have a chat to me. And I'd love to share more about what God's doing on the beautiful continent um, of Africa. So my name's Tim. You met Christina. Our daughter Faith is here. I've got three more children who are all big, uh, and so they're all back at home um, as well. And, and because um, Andy has been giving me a hard time about my facial hair, I thought only right to go start this morning with a bit of a quote from obviously the person I'm trying to become. It's not Father Christmas. It's not even Moses, as some people say, but the great Gandalf. Okay, so I think that's where I'm headed, just in case you wondered. The great Gandalf. Well, there's a conversation in the movie called The Fellowship of the Ring, the first of the trilogy, uh, uh, and it's in the minds of Moriah. Uh, they're passing through Gandalf, uh, Frodo, who's carrying the ring, uh, and all their companions passing through the minds of Moriah, and it's dark, and it's eerie, and, the, and if you've seen the film, they're going to wake up a beast at some point, and it's very dangerous. Uh, but Frodo is the one who's carrying the ring. He's the ring bearer. And in the minds of Moriah, he's beginning to think, have second thoughts. He's like, man. I wish this ring had never come to me. I'd had, I'd had my happy life back as a hobbit uh, um, in, in, the, in the peaceful, uh, serene surroundings of, of the hobbit place where I lived. What was that place called? Hobbiton. Shire, the Shire. Sorry, thank you. Um, I just completely blew my cover as a Lord, not so much of a Lord of the Rings freak. Um, so, so he's carrying the ring and he's saying to Gandalf, and they're having a moment together, he's saying, I wish the ring had never come to me. The ring that he had to destroy, the ring that, that took him on a mission. And he was like, this is too much, this is too hard for me. And Gandalf, in a wise, loving, and tender way, says to him, these things, you know, we can't always control these things that happen. But he says this, all we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. All we have to do is decide what to do with the time 
that is given to us. The challenge for Frodo at that moment was, is he going to faithfully fulfill the task that had been given to him? Daunting as it seemed. And in the scripture that we read, it's like Jesus is saying to us, with the gifts that you've been given, the opportunities that you've been given in life, what you have to decide is what are you going to do with the time that has been given to you? Are we going to follow Jesus or are we going to go our own way? That's ultimately the decision that we make. Daunting as it seems, tough as this life is, we have a decision to make this morning. Are we going to faithfully follow Christ as his servants on the mission that he has given us? Or are we going to go our own way? See, God has given us many and precious gifts. James 1 verse 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. All of us, your life is a gift. Being here this morning is a gift. Being part of this church is a gift. We have a choice as to how we use the gifts that God has given us. And that's the parable we're looking at this morning. It's what the parable of Jesus. And the lovely thing about the parables of Jesus is you can look at them from all kinds of different angles and get different lessons out of it and read them again and again and again. So I encourage you to go from here, turn to Matthew 25 and read that chapter yourself and ask God to reveal to you certain lessons that he has for you, even coming out of the baptism today. What is he saying to you about the gifts that he's given to you? But what I want to do this morning is just unpack the passage a little bit more for us. And then I'm going to challenge you to make an investment with your life. In fact, I'm going to challenge you to make three investments with your life that will help you become faithful servants of Jesus Christ. Does that sound okay? God bless us as we continue to look at his word. You see, this story that Jesus shared is towards the end of his life, end of his ministry, end of his time with his disciples. And what he's ultimately telling us is this, how we spend our life matters. Yes, ultimately it matters whether we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior as those who were baptized this morning. That's the ultimate decision. But beyond that, there's also choices we need to make in how we follow Jesus with our lives. The context of the whole chapter of Matthew 25 is a few stories. You can go and read it later. A few stories of Jesus instructing how important it is that we live faithful lives to him between his first coming when he died on the cross, was resurrected and went to God on high and his second coming when Jesus is going to return for us. You believe that? Jesus is coming back and between his first coming and his second coming, we have a choice in how we live our lives for him. We're either going to be here one day when he comes back in glory and we're going to bow the knee and worship him Or when we die, the Bible says we're going to fall asleep and then we're going to wake up in his presence. The challenge is this, are you going to hear those words? Well done, good and faithful servant. But the good news for this morning, for you this morning, is it's not too late. It doesn't matter, as as Christina was singing, I almost said as Jesus was singing. That's how highly I think of my wife. As Christina was singing, let's not look back. doesn't matter where you've been. You can surrender all of that to Jesus Christ. What matters this morning is where you are headed, where you are going. And so in this story, we see a wealthy man who's about to embark on a journey and he entrusts his property, it termed bags of gold. You saw that, yeah? He, he, the bags of gold, he entrusted them to his servant. The owner had no obligation to do that. Of his own free will, he gave bags of gold to his servants. It was an act of grace. It was a gift that was given uh, for the good of the servants. The bags of gold, in the story we saw, they were monetary amounts. And the three servants received different amounts. Jesus doesn't explain why one got five bags and one got two bags and one got one bag. They could have argued amongst themselves, but ultimately that doesn't matter. None of them were deserving. Some of us might say, well, I didn't get such a good deal in life. We've had a tough time. I compare my life to someone else's and my life has been harder than someone else's. Well, actually, that's the wrong way of looking at it. This life is a gift. 
You might think you're just a one bag of gold. Well, it's still a bag of gold in God's sight. It's still a gift. The question is, how are you going to use what you've been given? Not how are you going to compare it to someone else? Because I want to tell you, for other people, they're looking at you thinking, my life ain't so good in comparison to that person. The question is to come before God, the gracious giver of all gifts, and say, God, I'm looking for the good, for, the, for what you've invested in me so that I can invest it back into your kingdom. Interesting, the owner doesn't give instructions. He doesn't say, now what you need to do with your five bags of gold is go invest it on the stock exchange or buy some cryptocurrency. He doesn't tell them what to do. The implication is this, because they knew their master, because of the relationship they had with their master, they knew that their master was going to hold them accountable for what he'd given. They knew the heart of the master was that the five bags should grow, that the two bags should grow. It's out of relationship with the, with the father, out of relationship with him that we learn his good purpose for our lives. So the two of them go off. And because they knew what would please their master, they invest it and they get a return. One comes with five bags, the other comes with two bags. And the master says, says to them, well done, good and faithful servants. The, the master wanted them to live a fruitful life. And they lived a fruitful life that had a return on that in, in the initial investment. However, the third servant, what does he do? Digs a hole, hides the gold. Maybe if it was us, we're burying it under the mattress. Um, it's, it's, it's hiding it away, the gifts and talents, and saying, I'm just going to keep it safe for myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look after my own interests and not really look for a return for my master. I don't know, maybe he was risk averse, maybe he was insecure, maybe he had all kinds of reasons uh, why he wasn't going to invest what he'd been giving him. But he said, well, if I bury it, maybe he just simply didn't trust himself. This is maybe some of you in the room. You know, if you've got money in your pocket, it just burns a hole, doesn't it? <laughs> so maybe you thought, if I bury it, it's not going to burn a hole, and at least I'll be able to give it back to my master when he returns. But on, upon the return of the master, he calls his servants. Awkward moment for one, good moment for two of them. He asks them to give an account of how they've used the bags of gold. The two servants who doubled their master's investment received high commendation. They were good and faithful servants. But the servant who had no return on the master's investment is judged in the harshest terms. Jesus concludes with this saying, everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. What is he saying here? In this life and in the life to come, there's blessings beyond what we can ever imagine. Whatever investment we make in serving God in this life, we may see a return in this life, but there is an eternal return that's beyond what we can ask or imagine. And it's some, that, that's the eyes that we need to be looking with. God has a perfect plan. He is the source of the gift. We are entrusted with his property, with his life. Maybe the bags of gold belong to him and he distributes them as he sees fit. Maybe the bags of gold represent things like life itself, physical resources, the gifts and talents that God has given to you, our jobs. We've heard about family, the importance of family this morning, spiritual gifts, being part of a church. These are gifts that God has given you. But why has he given them to you? So that you can live a fruitful life, so that you can serve him with everything you've got. Ultimately, the bag of gold represents salvation. It represents Jesus Christ who has died for you. And why has he died for you? Yes, so that your sins can be forgiven, so you can be set free uh, from sin and death. But he's also died for you in order that you can serve him in this life. Live the best life possible on mission with him. Amen. That's what it means to be a good and faithful servant. When you're baptized and you're, you come out of the water, you're surrendering everything back to him and saying, I'm now going to live looking for a return on investment so that we can have a massive impact in this world. 1 Peter 4, verse 10 to 11 says this, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others, to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various 
forms. We have to diligently serve others. One author says this, we're to take meticulous care of the things that God has entrusted to you. Because God has entrusted them to you out of his love, not just for you, but his love for the world. So that we can be a blessing as Message Community Church. We can be a blessing to the community of Withenshaw and beyond as you all use the gifts that God and talents that God has given you. We've got to be a faithful steward. We've got to take meticulous care. You know that saying, when, when you borrow something from someone, you want to return it to them in better condition than, than, you, than, than it was given to you. That means that's taking meticulous care, isn't it? I remember once when I was a youth leader and we used to put up, we didn't have fancy rigs back then in the 90s. We used to, we used to string TVs together from borrow TVs. We used to beg, borrow and steal from all the adults in the church. We needed a CD player. Back then we had separates. Anybody ever have separates? You know, your, your turntable, your amplifier, your tape, your cassette deck. I'm a good job the youth are out there. I have no clue what I'm talking about. And your CD player. We needed a CD player. So we asked this guy, Derek. Now, Derek had the best um, sound equipment in his home. And I was a bit nervous. And he was one of those perfectionist kind of guys. Um, so, so we, but he said we could borrow his CD player for this youth event. I, I was like, to all our other youth leaders, we've got to take meticulous care of Derek's CD. And I remember CD player, I remember picking it up from the back of my Astra estate car because I was a good youth leader with, a, with, a, with an estate car so I could carry young people around. Those days, we didn't have checks and stuff. We got away with all kinds of nonsense. Um, and so, but that was a bad thing. Um, okay, that was a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, and so, and so I was carrying. I was the one carrying this stuff, and I put Derek's CD player on the top, and I was carrying it meticulously into the church. And you know what happened, didn't you? I'm the one that trips on the church step, and of all the things that fall, only Derek's CD player falls, and it's scratched, and it's dinged, and I'm the one that needs to go back to him the next week, saying, "I'm so sorry. I think it still works." <laughs> We're called to take meticulous care. Thankfully, when we mess up, we serve a gracious God who allows us a second start and a fresh start. But he's saying with the gifts I've given you, take meticulous care of them. They're unique to you. Nobody else has your friendships, has your relationships, has has your opportunities to serve Jesus Christ. Only you. If you don't do it, no one else will. But I love you so much. You're not trying to earn your salvation. You're doing this because you love me so much. You can serve me in this world. What a better life. I can't imagine a better life to live. It's what it's all about, isn't it? So I want to leave you with three bits of advice because my time is gone. And then I want us to pray. I'm trying to steward my time well. There are three investments I want to challenge you to make. Understanding the bags of gold, the precious gifts that God has given you, that you're called to take meticulous care for the sake of others. There are three things that you need to, three investments you need to make. The first one is this simply, you need to invest in your relationship with Jesus. There is no better investment that you can make. This is, this is a, a solid, I'm, I'm, I'm not a trader in gold or currency or crypto or anything like that. If I were to advise you on that stuff, you would not want to take my advice. But on this one, I'm 48 years old. I've been a Christian since I was seven years old. I got baptized the same day as Helen Fiddler at the back there about 40 odd years ago. And I want to tell you, it's the best investment you can ever make in your life is to spend time with Jesus Christ. There is nothing better that you can do. And Andy's even older than me and being a Christian longer than me. And he agrees, doesn't he? No better investment. And you, you invest in the relationship with Jesus Christ through getting stuck into his word, through meeting with other people, through listening to messages that are going to encourage you, through reading great books, but mostly through just saying, Jesus, it's me and you, mate. It's me and you. Help me. And the thing is, as you invest in that time with Jesus Christ, the second investment that you'll make is you'll invest, that's investing in your spiritual growth. That his character becomes formed within you. And you yourself can be changed to become like him. And this is the journey of what we call holiness. And it seems like such an old-fashioned word, but I just want to deposit this with you tonight, that holiness is simply this. It's decreasing the time between when you mess up and when you own up. You decrease the time. We're all going to make mistakes. But the evidence that Jesus is at work in your life is you confess quicker than you used to do. You confess quicker and you find that he's a gracious God. When you mess up, you're not running away. 
and saying, you know what, I'm dropping my bags of gold and I'm out of here. You'd rather come back to Jesus and mess up again. And you recognize that he is going to heal you, he is going to restore you, and he's going to say, go for it again, my son. Go for it again, my daughter. That is holiness. It's knowing that he is at work deeply in your life. And the third investment you're going to make, and I've talked about this already, is invest in the gospel into others. Invest the gospel by sharing it with others. Faithful servants, share the message of the gospel with others. I didn't know how I was going to close. And then this morning, someone sent me a photo. Can you put it on the screen, please? And they sent me a message. And this, for me, is what we're talking about. This is what is taking care of a bag of gold. On the left there is a friend of mine called Marlon. He used to work with us in the message. He sent me this message this morning. Marlon works at a recovery home with people who are coming off the streets. He says, I was wearing my Gangstar hoodie. Okay, Gangstar is our social enterprise in South Africa where we employ uh, ex-offenders. He says, I was wearing my Gangstar hoodie this morning, and the newest resident asks me if I know Clint from Durbanville Coffee Trailer. So Clint's one of our employees who works in Cape Town, one of our coffee tra- trailers. This guy, keeping his name away, uh, for, I don't know his name actually, he lived on the streets of Durbanville, and would always get hot water from Clint, until Clint referred him to a man called Raymond, who walked a journey of recovery with him. Raymond referred him to U-Turn Recovery Home, and yesterday he moved in with us. Now being in that recovery home, he'll now do the Alpha course, and he will have the opportunity to hear about the grace and goodness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see what the investment is? Clint's investment was hot water. We can all give people hot water. In fact, Jesus said, if you give water in my name, I am surely with you. Raymond investment was to introduce this man to a recovery home. The recovery home's investment is to to have Marlon look after him. Marlon will lead him on the Alpha course. Everybody here has an opportunity to invest in the gospel. Everybody here, you may say, my gift is so small, my talent is so small. Well, Clint was able to win at someone, get someone off the streets and potentially lead them to Jesus Christ because he shared with them some water. What an incredible encouragement that is to each of us, isn't it? Let's stand together.